Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode here at the Damage Report. It is Friday. <laughs> it's Brett. <laughs> Brett, it's Friday. It's Friday, Brett. Uh, hi, Friday. John. It's a good time to uh, mm. witness in real time the emotional disintegration of a human being in a hoodie. Yes, and exactly. that's what we're here I've for got, on Friday. got my hoodie. I've got gloves. It's so cold in here. Shut it's up. It's so cold. It is well, cold. Wait, 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 wait. Are you wearing fingerless gloves? Well, yeah, I gotta be able to like activate my no. phone and stuff. No. Hey, John, <laughs> can we get for the memers out there you as Judd Nelson? Don't you <laughs> forget about me? Don't I, no, no, Brett, I that can't is because. I can't be associated with that Judd Nelson character because in my mind, Bart is that Judd Nelson character. Like it has to, like I can see him doing the thing and I'm sure he'll comment uh, to that effect about the first time that he saw at a particular movie theater at the Breakfast Club. But <laughs> I can't, John, anyway. John, no. You what? need to do one of two things on the show today. One, remove the fingerless gloves, probably the smartest thing to do. Two, Maybe. never let me see your hands today. Because, or, or the audience, because if the audience sees you talking about un like, un uh, uh, like horrible executions and COVID deaths, mm -hmm. while you're like, you know, man, I just want to party and listen to punk music on um, my uh, Harley my Davidson. Are cold. Like, I'm wearing uh, a hoodie. I have to be wearing a hoodie because I'd be freezing. But God, you mentioned all the bad news, so I Just guess like, I'll take him off. The party's over, everybody. We're not listening to punk music anymore. Like I've ever, do you think I've ever listened to punk music? John, anyway. colon, quote. I don't really like music. Real no, moments. Don't. I mean, I, but if I did, I still wouldn't like punk music. I, I, I don't even know what it is. And Jordan, if you're you watching, probably, I apologize. <laughs> Jordan, I offended you. Jordan's not anyway, even. everybody, thank you for joining us on this show it's a unofficial Breakfast Club and punk music podcast. We discuss, you know, the latest developments in Breakfast Club and all that. Uh, is, is Disney going to reboot that? They're def they definitely are. Anyway, uh, we're joined today, as we always are, by Brett Ehrlich, host of the Happy Half Hour, as well as Common Room and Game Night and a bunch of other stuff. What do you have on the docket in regards to those properties? Um, I have on the docket in regards to those properties. Thank you for using, like, what are you, Variety? Those properties put out a shingle and ankled with a mouse house going to reboot Breakfast Club um, <laughs> on those properties. We've got such a weird day. Uh, I'm so happy to be here, though, doing this. Uh, I For for Happy Half Hour, Brooke Marks, my wife, uh, is going to be on Ooh. the Happy Half Hour. And then on... Um, on Common Room tonight, it is myself, my wife, uh, one of uh, our favorite streamers, Smacetron. So there will be a, uh, uh, a a robot on the show today, a very weird robot, a very eccentric robot, and a very eccentric former intern from TYT making a repeat appearance. Adiana Vega is going to be on. And I cannot wait to see Adiana and Smacetron talk to each other. This is the twitchiest Common Room yet, I think. It is yeah. like full on Twitch. Uh, Twitch. So that should be a lot of fun. Everyone uh, look forward to that. Uh, that said, there is a lot of news. Serious, no fingerless gloves news that we got to cover today. And we're going to do that. But if you stick around to the very end, you know what you get? You get the garbage people of the week. I've chosen one. Might be a little bit controversial. We'll have to see. I don't know who the community chose. and I don't know who Brett chose. But we're going to find out together when we feed Trashy at the end. I got Trashy right here, and Trashy is very hungry. We're gonna feed Trashy at the end of the program. But along the way, please hit the like button if you haven't already, or follow us, or subscribe, or whatever. Do, do the thing. Um, and if you send us messages, we'll respond as we go. Uh, but with that said, Brett, why don't we jump into the news? Got an insult and injury sort of situation here, with the injury being that Mitch McConnell has spent the past year desperately trying to stop you from getting any assistance from the government during the worst domestic crisis of the last century. The insult will be his characterization of the ongoing negotiations in this video clip. If my friends actually oppose PPP funding, vaccine distribution money, 
or extending some expiring unemployment aid? Let's hear why. But if they do not oppose these things, let's get them out the door. When I see that, like, I, I just want to be like, I, this is why people don't like politics, and I don't like it anymore when I see that, Brett. That was a little bit disingenuous from the Senate Majority Leader. It's just so boring. It's so yeah. Yeah. boring. It is so callous and so boring. Even the way he's delivering it. Uh, if you have any reason why these two BS pieces of legislation should not be joined in hellish matrimony with the disregard for people who actually need money to buy things <laughs> to help them survive, speak now or forever hold your peace. It's yeah. the worst. It is so, so it's ev everyone knows what he's doing. So here's the conclusion I've come to. Dear Republicans in Georgia, Georgia, which has a lot of economic woes they're in the throes of. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump, your president, wants a COVID aid package with some sort of direct payments to individuals. Everyone, R Republicans out there, Democrats, whom you, your state has voted for recently and currently, they want some kind of COVID aid money, checks to you, dollar bills in the mail for you. The only person who's standing there shaking his fist saying, no, we need to send that money to your boss is Mitch McConnell. So the yeah. only way to get what Donald Trump wants and what everybody else, if you ask them, wants is to vote for two Democrats in Senate because mm -hmm. then you get rid of Mitch McConnell and you can still filibuster whatever you want. But in this yeah, situation, will. you get people out of the way that are standing between you and the money you need to feed your family. Exactly. Yeah, I it just it's so like why why would a regular person be invested in politics when someone like Mitch McConnell can be like, well, if they don't want the money, then they should say no, that's not like it's it, crazy. like there well, were there 50 people in the room, half of them Republicans, half Democrats, every one of them rolled their eyes at that statement. Um, but thankfully, we do have some people who are going to communicate about the actual roadblock, which is not the Democrats not wanting the money. Um, it's him, basically just Mitch McConnell at this point, wanting there to be this shield against lawsuits for corporations that puts you into incredibly dangerous situations. Uh, that was explained very well um, in a much more casual setting yesterday in a live stream by Representative Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, as you'll see in this clip. What Mitch McConnell said is that we want to give big corporations total immunity for five years from COVID related lawsuits. Now, if we do that, if we accept that for a one time $1,200 check or a super short expansion of unemployment insurance, the deal is, is that you're gonna end up behind because you may get one $1,200 check on one hand, but you may also get a multi-million dollar hospital bill with no recourse and no ability to um, protect yourself from a negligent corporation or employer. And so that's not worth it, right? Your check is not worth your life. Exactly, and and we don't, we, we we know about some of these lawsuits and some lawsuits have already been filed. And this would of course be a retroactive shield that he wants. So it would nullify some of those. But there are so many that we don't even yet know about because a lot of people are still gonna be endangered over the next few months to the next year. And others will find out about long-term health problems that they might not yet be fully aware of. Um, of course, Mitch McConnell is like rushing to get out in front of those. And, and he might in the end actually succeed, but at least along the way we have some politicians who are trying to do the right thing. Yes. That is a very good way to put it, what AOC did, which is they want to, we're not gonna trade. The, the two options from the Republicans are starving you and killing you. Mm -hmm. That's it. They either want to starve you out and not give you anything. And, or they wanna allow your employer to just send you into whatever dangerous situation. And this is the skill of the Republicans is to remove any any common sense from the equation any de like 
they're trying to paint Democrats, progressives, any and and most Republicans at this point, because there is a bipartisan attempt to actually get you checks, right? They're trying to paint that as well. They just want to lock you up and uh, and throw away the key, take away your freedoms. It's like no, we want to we want to we want to keep you safe and keep food on your table for now, yeah. until we get through this. In the meantime, all that they're trying to do on the Republican side is is give your boss money and and squeeze you to to die. That's it. Exactly. Yeah, I think that the. The disparity between those positions seems pretty clear. We need to talk about a relatively new show called Un the Republic or UNFTR. As a Young Turks fan, you already know that the government, the media, and corporations are constantly peddling lies that serve the interests of the rich and powerful. But now there's a podcast dedicated to unraveling those lies, debunking the conventional wisdom. In each episode of Un the Republic or UNFTR, the host delves into a different historical episode or topic that's generally misunderstood or purposely obfuscated by the so-called powers that be, featuring in-depth research, razor-sharp commentary, and just the right amount of vulgarity. The UNFTR podcast takes a sledgehammer to what you thought you knew about some of the nation's most sacred historical cows. But don't just take my word for it. The New York Times described UNFTR as consistently compelling and educational, aiming to challenge conventional wisdom and upend the historical narratives that were taught in school. For as the great philosopher Yoda once put it, you must unlearn what you have learned. And that's true whether you're in Jedi training or you're uprooting and exposing all the propaganda and disinformation you've been fed over the course of your lifetime. So search for UNFDR in your podcast app today and get ready to get informed, angered, and entertained all at the same time. Every once in a while, I like to do a little bit of news that doesn't matter. Let's be very clear about that. It doesn't matter, but hypothetically, in an America that was a democracy, it would matter. So in a recent poll, one in five respondents said they've applied for unemployment insurance since the pandemic began. About three in 10 have applied for SNAP food aid or gone to a food bank, and one in five have struggled with at least one rent or mortgage payment. So this is to let you know that the need for assistance is definitely out there. All of this is what we've already experienced. We're now entering into a winter where we're gonna have increasing COVID deaths as well as the flu is gonna be back too. Let's not forget about that. And according to the latest numbers from the Labor Department, roughly 19 million Americans are currently receiving unemployment insurance. We're also anticipating the potential for up to 40 million people to be at risk for eviction if that isn't dealt with. So that's the groundwork. Now the news that doesn't matter, that is that the top stimulus provision that most likely voters are interested in seeing is another round of stimulus. Those checks. I don't like that terminology, but that's what they're calling them here. 75% of poll respondents said this was what they'd want prioritized in another package. Now, beyond those checks, they want food aid, expanded unemployment insurance, money for coronavirus testing, and small business support. Those are other areas that people highlighted. At least half of those polled signals that those provisions were important to them. And all of that would be important and relevant. If we had a government that was actually responsive to the will of the people, but Mitch McConnell just got reelected. Caring nothing about any of those things. The only priority he has is protecting corporations from lawsuits, which it turns out when you poll people about is not actually one of their major priorities. Liability protections for businesses, that was seen as vital by just 23% of people. They listed it as a priority for the negotiations. I think that that number is obscenely high, but it is very, very low in comparison to everything else that's being discussed. But that is the thing that is driving the ongoing conversation, whether we're gonna have that thing that people don't care about. Listen, I I don't think 23% is insanely high for wanting some form of liability protection. Because what that should do is give you faith in human beings that when they hear something like the word protection, they're into it. So it, it also gives you faith in human beings that 70, 70 what is it, 7% of people see right through that. But mm -hmm. I don't. I don't begrudge people and also small business owners are probably like, listen, it is very difficult to live in a world where you can get sued for anything. Like, I get it. But the important thing to focus on is the vast disparity between right now, Mitch McConnell 
we showed it earlier in the show, like Mitch McConnell calls these even. He's like, well, if you if you want to switch one out for the other, that's your call. But it's not. It's not even the thing you're pushing for is why vastly less popular than the thing that we're pushing for. And the wheat, that's that's all of us. It makes sense. People want to have some kind of support to get them through the day. Mitch McConnell has found a way to be so detached. He's taken advantage of of ticky tack BS of poorly worded rules in the Constitution to take advantage of the way the Senate gives you way more power than it should in every possible way. Mm-hmm. And and he's holding that and with things that he wants us to believe are like mainstays of of legislating that like the filibuster as we know it's been around since 1974 or something. Like these mm-hmm. this isn't the t- tried and true old old standards of the Constitution. This is stuff that he's made up recently. Why? Because he knows that the only way he can hold on to power is through mechanisms like that. If you ask, as John just pointed out, as you just pointed out, like if you ask people, most Americans agree with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that segment used to have the most Americans agree. Yeah, hundred percent. He's he's abusing the sort of structural, foundational inequity in how political power is divvied up, and also the this is not sort of a fundamental part. Of the structure, it's just sort of drawn from our history. The fact that, like hypothetically, these tools could be used by either side. You could have a standing filibuster for literally everything to hurt Democratic priorities or to hurt Republican priorities, but that isn't actually how it works out because the Republicans don't really have priorities. Every once in a while, they pass massive tax cuts. That's about it. But when like, it's not like the rich desperately need help and the poor desperately need help. Which one's gonna win? No, one side desperately needs help and the other is doing pretty good. And so like tools that theoretically stop the progress for both sorts of legislation, that's not actually what we have. We have one side that is perfectly happy to have the government accomplish literally nothing. And the other side that has a few of its members that are pushing for some sort of actual progress. And so the result is generally nothing happens. And that is benefiting Mitch McConnell's position right now. And it's certainly hurting the millions of people that desperately need this aid. Over the past few days, indeed far longer, but in the popular conscious the last few days, there has been a popular effort to stop the execution of Brandon Bernard. But this is America and this is 2020. And so Brandon Bernard was executed by the federal government on Thursday at the Federal Correction Center in Terre Haute, Indiana, according to the Bureau of Prisons. Bernard was pronounced dead at 9.27 PM. He was the youngest person in the United States to receive a death sentence in nearly 70 years for a crime committed when he was an adolescent. And so his execution was delayed by more than three hours as the final pleas for his life were made to the Supreme Court and Donald Trump. In the end, Justices Breyer, Kagan and Sotomayor dissented in the majority opinion that the execution should go forward. The president did nothing. It seems quaint to have believed that there was a chance that he would. And the execution broke a 130 year precedent of pausing lame duck executions until the incoming president is sworn into office. So there, there's some history for Donald Trump there that he could have continued that um, that tradition, but he did not. And now Brandon Bernard is dead. Well, yes, and it's also the reason that Trump can do nothing about this execution in Terre Haute is that he's already done so much to advocate for the expedited executions like this that he gets to sit back. That's what's so frustrating. It's not like he's been pushing for them. He's been pushing for them. He has not only, I mean, I'm sure it's been covered. The the attempt to expedite executions involves uh, such initiatives as the expediting of of firing squads as a way to kill people because yeah. he, he doesn't feel like they have good enough access. He and, and the others that advocate for this feel like there isn't good enough access and ready enough access to the chemical cocktail that kill people. They wanna go back to the firing squad days. Yeah. I just will never understand the instinct of people to, I, under, I guess I understand the instinct of people to have a death penalty. I get it, kill that person. Do unto other, you know, like you know, a hand for a hand, eye for an eye. But in this situation, I feel like you can't go through with that. You need to eventually take time. Even like religions, major religions advocate for forgiveness, rehabilitation, moving on. It's just not. 
it's just not good for you. And then the one thing that really gets me is the, in this situation, like it's about a guy who, who committed this horrible, horrible crime when he was 18. Um, but like the uh, the concept of the death penalty, you might be wrong, and then you're just killing someone. Like, yeah, and that's nuts. That that bothers a lot of people, but not nearly enough people. The prospect, well, no, not, the prospect that more innocent people will be executed. The knowledge that innocent people have been executed, which is the sort of thing that should just shut down society. The idea that a person could have been locked up for literally decades and indeed was finally murdered by the state for something that they didn't do is an injustice that we really have passed over too casually as a society. Um, and for this individual, yes, he was involved in a horrendous crime um, 21 years ago, didn't perpetrate the actual violence individually, has apparently been a, a model prisoner for like 20 years, has spent his time trying to stop other people from pursuing a life of crime. Uh, the majority of the surviving jurors say that they regret their actual decision back then. There have been allegations that the prosecution hid information um, that would have shown how inconsequential to this criminal group he actually was. I mean, look, there's a lot of details, and you can look it all up. There's some great um, rundowns of all of that evidence. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of Americans who just desperately want the government to be in the business of killing people. They don't like it being. 70 years since they've killed someone so young. They like the precedent that there are going to be people killed, especially people like Brandon Bernard. Actor Jeffrey Wright tweeted, Trump and his clan can forgive a psychotic like an Eddie Gallagher who expressed no remorse for his crimes, but refused forgiveness for Brandon Bernard, who was accomplice to a horrendous act, was punished, and then by all reports spent 22 years working at repentance. Wonder why, and we all of course know why, and that is 100% true, Eddie Gallagher is a celebrity on the right because he committed war crimes. If he hadn't committed war crimes, none of them would even know who he was. And if he actually like apologized, if he broke down over what he had done, he wouldn't be a celebrity anymore. Perhaps why he doesn't do that, because the human instinct to not be a psychopathic killer that shows no remorse is pretty strong. Um, but in addition, not just Eddie Gallagher, there are other more recent celebrities that exist only in the popular conscious of the right because of the fact that they killed people. Including Kyle Rittenhouse, who notably said, I don't regret it. And yet he's making money on the right because he killed people. There was a writing assignment in a Dallas school that asked for people to talk about a hero of the modern age, and it suggested different heroes uh, Gandhi, Cesar Chavez, Malcolm X, George Floyd, and Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> All of the, the the sort of core religious values that they say that they believe, not when it butts heads with their politics. Certainly not then. Remorse and rehabilitation. Nope, not for certain sorts of people. It's insane. It's insane. It makes me feel crazy. That's what it is. It makes me feel crazy because it, it all it all holds. Like Jeffrey Wright puts it out clearly. This idea of like. As you mentioned earlier, like there's new evidence that comes out to see whether someone's going to live or die. There was new evidence that they were talking about admitting to this case specifically. And the people on the Trump side are like, no, no, you had your chance. This is all over. Stop you know, trying to use the court system to get around something that is very provable. Okay, yeah. at the same time, they're like, keep the courts open for uh, counting votes. No one's gonna live or die about that. Like, keep them, oh, we gotta keep the court system open so we can overturn this election and use that in every possible. It's insane. I mean, that's, it's it just from top to bottom, from things like who they champion to uh, whether their principles are used consistently from one story to another. It just makes yeah. you feel absolutely crazy. I'm sorry, it's just Sorry. strange to, it, it shouldn't be insane to value some kind of consistency of principle. But by so blatantly and with such a straight face, being so hypocritical at every moment of every day. It just yeah. it makes you want to pull your hair out about the Republican Party and about about most people involved in in very high levels of determining how our lives play out on a daily basis. Yeah, and in particular, in terms of the hypocrisy, it's like I tweeted yesterday that like right like after that news broke, there are like potentially millions of small government pro life 
Americans who are like, yes, the government killed somebody. Yeah, that's the other thing that's just in there. Like, I get it. I almost mentioned something, you know, yesterday when this was all going down, which is like, inside everyone who's for the death penalty is this weird instinct to be like, yeah, let's just kill someone. Yeah. I, and, and I didn't do tweet it because I absolutely have that. Like I've been in that position where like I don't see any reason not to kill this terrible, terrible person. Like I get it, but that's the instinct you have. Everyone says that all feelings are valid. That's not what valid means. All instincts mm-hmm. happen, all feelings happen. You need to afford yourself some time after having those feelings to really sit down and appraise whether that instinct was valid or constructive or good. And sometimes it's just not. It's that way with the death penalty. I agree. So you know, like the president is trying to overturn the results of the election, and we're like not supposed to freak out about it. Don't get hysterical. He's just, you know, trying to overturn the results, and he's only one man. Well, and then, you know, there's all those attorney generals from like more than a dozen states that are saying that it should be overturned too. Oh, and then now there's also 106 Republican House members who want this court case to go through and for the election to be overturned. But don't be paranoid, everyone. Don't be freaking out. It's just so many Republicans that when a Republican like speaks out against the election being overturned, it's national news. And we can do stories about each individual one because they're that rare. But you're probably just freaking out if you think that this is a bad thing that they're trying to overturn it. But no, there you have 106 House members. A significant portion of the entirety of Congress thinks elections shouldn't exist anymore. Certainly not if they end up with the other party being chosen. Interestingly, in that group of 106, there's 16 members who were just elected in the four states that they don't want to count. Which means that they are saying that their elections were illegitimate and fraudulent. And yet they're gonna get sworn in, that's sort of yeah. weird. I'm sure they'll get past that little bit of hypocrisy there, Brett. Well, that's it, they don't believe it either. So here's the two ways to really characterize this. If you're a you know, genuine human being who wants to call things what they are, you say all of these Republicans, 106 Republicans don't believe, none of them. It is my belief that none of them believe that this was a fraudulent election. One of the biggest daggers to the heart of that argument that they're making is what John said. Like, then then resign, then refuse. Have your have your election be a do over. They don't want to do that. They're all banking that this that Biden will become the next president of the United States, and the strategy behind that is to then be able to say, well, this was illegitimate anyway. I'm playing service to my base who is rallying around Donald Trump. And now I get a rallying cry for two more years until I have to run again, which by the way, I've already started to. Like that's them running, that is the constant election. And and they are the ones who have faith that like this will all blow over, but at least their base will like them after. There's mm-hmm. you know 40, 46% of Republicans in the House of Representatives who are silent. They yeah. are si- they're not saying anything. They are all, and so if you want to be the other way of characterizing this, and you're a Democrat, you can say those people are against Donald Trump. Get rid of them. They're mm-hmm. evil. They're evil. Yeah. They're standing in your way. Those people want Joe Biden to steal this election, and and that's what the the 54 percent are banking on. There's only two Republicans in the House of Representatives who came out against this bill, and guess what? The fact about them is. They're outgoing. They're mm-hmm. done with this. They're Paul Ryaning into the the great, you know, red hat wearing bicep curling garage <laughs> gym in the sky, yeah. where they can, you know, the man cave of lobbyists, where they just get to be themselves and not have to deal with this crap anymore. Like exactly. that's yeah, and, and that's where the only ones the, who can come out and say something saying they don't approve of this. Exactly, and. And a couple of other Republicans scattered across different states, maybe an attorney general in one state and you know a secretary of state in another, and that's just about it. That's a little tiny handful, but again, we're being hysterical, being worried about what precedent is being set. And yeah, even for those who are just, who don't actually believe it, which is virtually all of them, and it's just, I need to say this so that the base will like me, but don't worry, I mean, it's not gonna actually change the results. So, well, but then when it doesn't change the results, what happens with all those people? They just go back to thinking elections are legitimate afterward. No, these are precedents are being set. This is not good. 
And it's not just randos, well, it is, but it's not just powerless randos. You've got Steve Scalise, Minority Whip, you've got Jim Jordan, top Republican on the Judiciary Committee, the chair of the Conservative Freedom Caucus, Andy Biggs, you've got Jim Banks, the incoming Republican Study Committee Chairman. Nerd. And you've got, so that's all House members, yeah, exactly. Um, but then you also have senators who are to varying degrees playing along with this too. You've got Ted Cruz who wants to argue before the Supreme Court for the end of elections effectively. You've got little Marco Rubio saying, according to the left and their partners in the legacy media, the Supreme Court was the appropriate place to legalize abortion, and redefine marriage, but it has no business taking up claims regarding a presidential election. And he's just, he's really, he's not good. And that's, he's, I, I get it, it's like you're making it about abortion, no. Like, and he's not even, Marco Rubio is such a little weenie that he's not even willing to come out and say, end elections, give it to Trump. But he wants the base to sort of think that's what he's saying, because he's saying the Supreme Court should take it up. He's not saying it was 100% fraudulent, it should be overturned. He's just weenily trying to get them to lump him in with the rest, but leave him enough of an out. So if in a year he needs to pretend that he didn't go along with this, maybe he still can. This is like literally the worst position out of all the Republicans, because it's the it's most craven. It's ticky tack. I mean, Cruz Cruz's approach is the same. He wants to argue, but he wants to be the champion as well. He wants to be known as the champion. Blah blah blah. Supreme Court. Blah blah blah. You know, defend defend the Constitution. Blah blah blah. That's all he wants to say. None of them are saying like throw it out and do it over again. He's just like, I want to fight this, and he's banking on you know. What's he gonna do? Unseat Donald Trump? He he's pro, Ted Cruz is probably banking on Trump to sabotage himself in some way. He's Ted Cruz is rooting for Cy Vance Jr. To, the, to prosecute Trump and put him in jail so that he can be so that Cruz and Rubio can be on record saying like I am championing what mm -hmm. you want. But here, yeah. MAGA, the whole situation. Let's look at what Trump actually did for you. Nothing, bub kiss. All these people are using you. All of these people are using you to do what? The one thing they pass, tax cuts for the rich. Mm -hmm. That's it. They're saying keep the states open, keep the states open during all this. They don't care. They're all home, they're all clear, they're all fine. They don't care if you live or die. That's what's so sad about it. What you need to do is like advocate for the things we said in other videos and early in the show, which is, there's, there are people out there who are progressive, even like liberal in the middle. There are some Republicans out there who are fighting to get you the, 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 the intuitively smart thing you need when you're trying to avoid dying from a pandemic. And that's just like money to get by in the meantime. That's it. Mm -hmm. But this is so yeah. frustrating. Like also, Marco, by the way, Republican appointed judges in every court have themselves said, that the court is no place to take up any of these BS fever dream challenges that you're trying to say they should. So right. it's not repines away. <laughs> yeah, it's not liberals. It's your yeah. own judges are like, no man, this is crazy even for me. Exactly. No, but the, this is all none of it's real. It's just it's whatever they wanted to. Like Ted Cruz is saying, so long as there are any doubts about the election. There can't be any nomination hearings for anything, not just like Supreme Court or just judges for anything. But he was also saying that in advance of the 2016 election about Hillary Clinton saying she should never get a hearing for any of her judges. So it's weird how like no matter what happens, the Democrats never get any hearings, but the Republicans can have them three and a half days before the election. It's sort of weird. It's almost as if it's just the outcome that he cares about and not any of the arguments he's making. <laughs> If you are going to be one of these right wing post election grifters that are trying to show that you're the most loyal to the president, you gotta stay on your toes because things change fast. One day saying that the results of four states should be nullified, that gets hundreds of Republicans on board, that's the most extreme thing you can do. But there are steps beyond that, including from one individual in the Texas state government, Kyle Biederman, who wants to secede. He is going to be filing legislation that will allow a referendum to give Texans a vote for the state of Texas to reassert its status as an independent nation. So if they're not successful in nullifying the votes of literally millions and giving the election of Donald Trump, even though he lost by a massive amount, then they're going to take their state and go home. Yeah, this is always a winner in Texas though. It's always a winner to say we don't need you, and that's it. And good, 
yeah, seven flags over Texas. I don't care. <laughs> like, do it. Uh, <laughs> it's never going to pass. It's never going to happen. Um, Puerto Rico is voted to be a state like a few months ago for the third time or something. Never happens. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, do it. Rah, rah. And, and that's it. And it's now it's become almost a contest. And this is what's so dangerous. It's all, it's become almost a contest to say like, no, I'm going to go the farthest. I'm going to do the nuttiest thing that is so anti-American that it can only be described as Trumpy. And and in the meantime, everyone else's biggest fear, and a lot of them in that calculations is it'll never actually happen. But what we're all saying is like, well, if enough of you are trying to out Trump each other, then maybe we'll be in a situation where you're all like drinking poison ironically. Mm-hmm. You're, you're still doing it. You're still doing that terrible, ridiculous thing. And, and I'm afraid it's actually going to become reality. Um, and and that's, that's not okay. Yeah, I, we've watched for the last couple of years now, lots of Republicans trying to do impersonations of Donald Trump because they wanna be popular during the time of Trump. But is it maybe even more worrying what they're gonna do to try to take the place of Trump? The crazy things they'll say and the sham legislation they'll file when they're trying to take over for him? I, that's well, that's we're seeing worrying. that happen. We're seeing that happening. That's what's happening in the media first. Like the the OANNs and the Newsmaxes are becoming that reality, and it is eating everyone to the left of them in their minds. Like yeah. and and but, but it but keeps them. moving. If this is the spectrum and Newsmax is way I guess way the hell over here, then that's ninety-eight percent of functioning brain stems that they are eating <laughs> like zombies. Yeah. Like exactly. that's that's what's happening. Um and that'll ha- and that's happening from media and viewership to other media and politicians. Um yeah. And this is, we'll see how it plays out, but it's it's absolutely fascinating to watch. Yeah, yeah. Even though, if I could jump jump ahead to the second to last graphic, the state cannot legally secede from the country, according to multiple reports. Well, yeah, that that does seem like that would be kind of an issue with this. And also, yeah, duh, you can't just leave. Remember, we had a big war actually about this. They seem very. They seem very into that idea. You know, like it was it was Rush Limbaugh like two days ago saying secession. Now it's a state legislator. Are you sure it's not a senator in three days? Are you that sure in this time that it won't be a senator? That Ted Cruz won't be advocating for secession. And then we'll have someone say, stop freaking out. He's only saying Texas should secede because he knows it's not gonna happen. As if all of this doesn't matter and it's totally cool and you can just do whatever you say and nothing fundamentally bad happens. A little bit of good news when it comes to the vaccine. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar said in ABC's Good Morning America that the US Food and Drug Administration will grant emergency youth authorization to the COVID-19 vaccine developed by Pfizer and German partner BioNTech. We could see people getting vaccinated Monday, Tuesday of next week, said Azar. So that is certainly good news. I immediately started Googling for when that sort of thing might start in California. And supposedly LA County is going to be getting almost 100,000 doses next week, maybe. And we could potentially be getting 150 to 250,000 per week after that within a few. Um, Now, obviously most of our viewers don't live in LA County, but this does show that they are ramping up across the country to do this relatively quickly. And this is just from the first of others. Now one, um, I forget exactly which company it was. One of the vaccines has experienced some sort of delay. Uh, unfortunately, but we are going to be having these coming soon, which is good because we're about to hit the worst part of the entire pandemic so far, Brett. Yes, um, it is. It's very it, there's a, there's many themes to the uh, world in the last five months, and one of them is painfully like some Greek mythological. Like some Greek mythological figure, we have been told by an oracle what is going to happen. Yet we can't avoid it playing out exactly that way. And we are doomed to live through it. 
And the oracles are all Cassandra who are like, you didn't believe me. I told you exactly what was gonna happen. So yeah. this is one, one of them was mail in ballots. This is, it's gonna get really bad. Here's ways you can undercut it, but luck, hopefully it will be better soon. And and it's just it's just this terrible painless or powerless feeling that you have that you have to live through this this swell and and making it worse. Knowledge that there will be tens to hundreds of thousands of people who don't live through it to get to that that solution. Yeah. The nation topped 292,000 total deaths from COVID yesterday. Several hundred more than the number of battlefield deaths in World War II. We also passed 3,000 deaths in a single day, a count higher than the 9-11 terrorist attacks. And as I said on the show yesterday, we are just about out of historical analogies to make. We've got, uh, I guess, the Spanish flu and the Civil War, and that's it. And beyond that, right. this will be the biggest killer in the history of our country. And by the way, we're gonna give you some other numbers in a second, but isn't it sort of weird that like we just passed 292,000 deaths and it's nobody's fault and nobody's gonna get in trouble for it. Like that the, like as, as Brett said, we knew everything six months ago, probably eight or nine months ago, but we definitely knew everything six months ago. And all of the people in charge of protecting us uh, decided they weren't gonna do that. And they were just gonna reopen everything, schools, businesses, all of that. And and they're also gonna like mock people for wearing masks and pretend that that's not important and try to pack people in. And they're gonna themselves throw all ton, tons of events and all that. And so 292,000 people die and it's nobody's fault. Like stolen cigarettes, that's someone's fault. You can point a finger at a person. But like a third of a million people in a few days having died is nobody's fault, nobody. That seems weird, doesn't seem quite right. To me, my my belief is that Trump would have been reelected were it not for COVID. So in a certain way, the only fault that really has been you know, justice in terms of whose fault it is that has been meted out is is like, a guy doesn't get to be president anymore, but probably will still be fine and make yep. tons and tons of money off of this and probably not suffer any legal consequences. But like the best I can use to get myself to sleep at night is at least the worst president in American history won't be president anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And the consequence. It's like the first night of Hanukkah. It's like, oh, cool <laughs> buttons. Thanks. And the thing is, like, I, I obviously it is far better that he doesn't have the job. But like every three months, there's a conversation about like, does he really want the job? So like him losing it really doesn't seem like enough. I mean, By the way, I said, yeah, I just said this at the very beginning of his presidency. It's like, can we just let him be like what the queen is and have other people run the country? Because that's all he wants. He wants the title, but not the job. Well, and th that has been demonstrated quite a bit this year. Every day I spend just a minute or two trying to throw information out there to scare people into not doing needless travel around the holidays. Um, I took a look at what, uh, I think this is for the entire US. So if you go to NBCnews.com, it might redirect now, like originally it would take you directly to this tool. It's showing you the the best projections for what the next month or two are going to look like. This is if you know people don't change their behavior, if they continue the way that we're going, if we don't have new lockdowns and stuff like that. They are predicting over 3,500 deaths a day. In the middle line, there's that like heat zone of it could be as high as 5,000 a day for a couple of weeks, and then maybe hopefully going down to hopefully getting just to a thousand again. And they also have a tool for what if we all immediately started wearing masks? And that would obviously be far better. But because of the irresponsibility to this point, you'd still be losing like more than a thousand for literally weeks at this point. And by the way, yesterday, Robert Redfield said for the next 60 to 90 days, we're going to have more deaths per day than we had in 9 11. But again, it's nobody's fault. Nobody should go to jail. Like imagine if, Brett, you remember 9 11. Imagine yes. if 912 had had the exact same thing, and then 913 and 914. After six weeks, 
I think people would be asking tough questions about the government's lack of response. Yes, that is a that's one way to put it. Um, there's the thing that strikes me is like all this stuff is behavior based, and um, you, you, it's hilarious to me that the same people who are who uh, are yelling at the left for saying like you just want handouts, you want everyone to do stuff for you so your life can be better. It's like, well, in order for you not to die, you're not going to change your behavior, but you want basically you're going to need me to get uh, my mask on. You're going to need me to get vaccinated because you're not. And you're going to need me to be the 75% of people who have taken steps to make it so that we get to the point where by you know March, there's only 500 people a day dying. Like yeah. you're the welfare state. <laughs> you need me, you need scientists, you need everyone to do stuff to make your life better. That's frustrating for me, I'm still gonna do it. Because yeah. that's what oh. my definition of being like a patriotic American is. And it's not all these weird ceremonial and if you think about it, truly weak behaviors uh, that you think are, are so patriotic. Yeah. Every day is gonna be scary from here on out. Every day. So we get it. And like I I almost wanna like predict what day do you think we will get vaccinated, Brett? And then like look back on this video in like three or six months and realize how off we were. Hope, hoping six months. One specific thing it. is like there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, there's they voted. Some people voted against this vaccine and like the clarifications by the people who voted against were like, I just don't know if it's ready for people who are 17, but 18 and over, yes. Like that's when one scientist is being like, I just <laughs> want you to know, like we are only arguing about 17 year old versus 18 year old here. But like, isn't it sort of like a happy coincidence that those 17 year olds will be lucky if they're 18? Or old, like they'll be older yeah, by the yeah, time yeah. they get it. And I get and that that yeah. doesn't actually answer the concern. Every year, the country waits to find out who was the best person of the year. And they're going to find out next week on the Turks and Jerks of the Year here on TYT Network. But we have a little appetizer for them, and that's the time person of the year who was revealed to be two persons, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And my response is, ugh, Brett, what do you think? Well, I no, mean, if, if we show that again, that, no, show no, no, it again. This, is, this is a big reveal. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys can tell. Well, you probably can't because it's not it's not from the front, but they've actually been surgically joined together. Oh my God. So it is one person. Like it's not, everyone's like, oh, that's two people. Ugh. No, they're one person now. And I don't it, people and, get that. And just for the scientific marvel that it truly is, you should be on your knees thanking science for making this possible. Um, well, yeah. look, Zolan, before we give more of a response, understand that the short list apparently included President Donald Trump, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who got Defender of the Year, and healthcare workers, so they were lumped together, and then racial justice organizers protesting the death of George Floyd. So many people have said that they believe the only reason Donald Trump is on that list is so that Trump and Trump fans would pay attention to the result, because otherwise, this is a year where he presided over the pandemic. And by the way, he was impeached. Like people forget that. He was impeached this year. Why would he be the person of the year this year of all years? What legitimate reason is there? They just go for this is word cloud of the year. And they just go like, what are the mm -hmm. biggest names? And yes, and obviously they had it. It was going to be. Those names that you mentioned, I don't think it was going to be Fauci, but it was health. There was very likely, I think, healthcare workers battling the coronavirus pandemic, and they're thought. And this is how, this is how producing happens. Like for stuff like this, year-end lists. Like I've done many and lists. You do, you go, okay, what we're going to do the leaders of each type of person of the year, and then we'll pick the one that should win out. And I'm sure it went yeah. like. Do we do the thing where it's like the overlooked person that we really need to value when we don't? Um, then they say, and so that's healthcare workers. And then it goes, what about the biggest turd of the year that everyone can't help but talk about? <laughs> and then they say, when did we most recently do a turd like person? If it was, if it's too yeah. soon to do another, we're not doing that. And then they say, what do we want? 
And then is it Kamala Harris? Cuz she's the first uh, you know, woman and woman of color to be mm-hmm. vice president or is it Joe Biden who beat the turd of the year? Well, what if we do both of them because we're doing a compromise here that'll end up really meaning nothing. But I think when you take a step back, you can look at it and say, all right, these two people represent a referendum not to have a turd anymore. And and really, that's all you can declare as a result of yeah. this weird election. And and that's what they did. And I'm I'm it's it's one of those things that makes so much sense in a writer's room that that still makes mm-hmm. no sense unless you can have the writer's room there to explain it to you. Yeah, I get. Yeah, 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 and, I, and it's safe, I guess. I don't know. It just sure it is a rejection of Trump, which is good. And um, Kamala Harris brings the the sort of historical part of it, which is fine. And so I get. I definitely think if you're gonna do Biden, some people are like, why are you doing two people? But I think no. I think if you're gonna do Biden, you, I think you have to do Biden and Harris. Um, but I would ask. With the finalists we talked about, what percentage of Biden Harris voters would have chosen Biden and Harris? Like, I feel like a lot of them would have chosen Fauci. A lot others would have chosen um, racial justice uh, organizers. It just like the year wasn't about Biden. It really wasn't. Like, yes, no. it's a rejection of Trump, but that's not what the experience should be remembered for. But John, you're 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 describing all different kinds of people, mm-hmm. uh, and the only thing that could bring them together was Biden, <laughs> either eagerly or Maybe. or Maybe. like hands up, I get it, I have to, and that's and that's that's something that is so difficult to characterize in a history book, but yeah. maybe this will do it. Like people are gonna, I mean. For me, what about like I the said, person who invented the vaccine. How about that? That's who I know. I thought about that on. while you were talking. That's crazy. Uh, but no, because <laughs> no one has an experience with that yet. So it's not. Yeah, that's open. true. Maybe that'll be next year. Um, yeah. um, no, next year it'll be. Do you know? Be something you know wild. Let me let me like really quick, just out of curiosity, because you know, there's a, a very important question of how much does this actually matter. Who was last year's person of the year? Last year's person of the year was. Um, Ken from Pasadena, I think Ken. He runs. A, it was, I think it was Ken. Mm-mm. Last year's person. No, he of the was a year. finalist. He was a finalist. He wasn't the person of the year. Who was the person of the year? It was Mueller. No. I don't know. No, Mueller has never been person of the year. That's person interesting. I, I might. Greta Thunberg. Yes. Yeah. Did you look it up? No. You saw it in the chat. Okay. Yes, it was Greta. I, I only saw. remember that because Trump was mad. But I am. So, I've never been more angry with you. I have never been more angry with you. Well, because I accused you of getting the yes. information from Twitch. Yes, I have never you been. You know more what's angry. funny? So just really fast. So Greta Thunberg released um, uh, a speech to commemorate the fifth year of the Paris Climate Accords and how basically nothing has been done. And so, like it, because she's from another country, uh, like there's a spectrum of how people pronounce her name. Like and as you get to know her a little bit more, maybe you put like a little bit more of an attempt on pronunciation for it. But I listened to that speech and she introduced herself and I thought, man, I'm still not even close. I'm not. I got like multiple syllables that aren't even in there yet. Oh really? Um, yeah, it's it's complicated. Is it different from what I said? What did you say? Thunberg. Yeah, I know it's different. It's different. We'll, we'll play the video together later. I had. We had a. Give yeah. it to her. Give it to her yeah. again. Anyway, but yeah, I, um, I, ugh, I'm so mad you think I cheated because I was like, oh, that's right. Trump threw a fit, and I remember the photo where she's like, okay, you know. okay. I'm gonna have to have your wife confirm. She's How in the room with you, right? She, she trusts okay. me, so that I guess. Okay, everybody, it's the end of the week, and so it's time to take out the trash. I'm seeing in Twitch, I think is that so there's the there's a couple of trashy emojis which are really good. There was one that looked like a ravenously burning one. But anyway, wow. uh, this is Garbage People of the Week where Brett and I each choose one person who best summarized needlessly being human garbage and uh, the community does as well. Uh, Brett, who is your garbage person? My garbage person is someone who has occasionally shown up to be like a guy who shouldn't be garbage. 
But it's uh, Gerald uh, Geraldo Rivera. Here it is. I googled him. Uh-huh. There you go. Uh, Geraldo <laughs> Rivera is going to do something that is absolutely fantastic and hilarious. Uh, I pulled together a clip from his appearance on the Five, where he manages to almost get it. Mm-hmm. He wants to call out other networks for being uh, for, for having news, hard news shows that are themselves actually secretly opinion. What he doesn't realize is he, at the same time, is going to do this on Fox News that <laughs> does that all the time. But also, I included the clip right before where he does this perfect analogy for what he himself is absolutely doing. So here, without further ado, is Geraldo Rivera. Uh, any hope <laughs> that the media will have a come to Jesus moment and say, "Oh my God, we've been, uh, you know, yeah. we've been wrong, and uh, we'll we'll be scrupulous moving forward." I think is uh, is is optimism be, so naive that just is not just <laughs> just not justified by the facts. Uh, I, I think of Ali Velsi, a good reporter. I like him. He's a good guy. Uh, reporting w- with a straight face, right to camera, that the riots were mostly peaceful as the buildings were actually right. burning behind him. I mean. I, I just turn around. I, 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 hey, the buildings are burning. It's it's a uh, this must be a riot. But I think that th- th- what is disguised often is that the hard news programs are also opinion programs in the guise of uh, p- a public service. Uh, it's it's entertainment in its own way. Uh, you know, the, the the fact that they are so slanted and and you know it's 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 so clear to everyone should be so clear to everyone to take it with a grain of salt. Oh my god. It's like look around, turn around, Geraldo. <laughs> Geraldo News credibility around. is burning in the house you're in. His characterization mm-hmm. of Ali Velshi is uh wildly stupid because like mm-hmm. that's like it's it, Geraldo's advice to weathermen standing in front of a, a, a rainstorm is listen, it's raining. If it's raining behind you, it's raining everywhere in the world at the same time. Mm-hmm. But then mm-hmm. just like the lack of, he does at in that same clip say that like the five is encouraged to be very opinionated. But he's doing it on Fox News where if you tune in at any time of the day until very recently, and it's fantastic to watch them all go like, I think people are starting to hate us. Uh, I hate <laughs> them now. I hate the people that hate us now, uh, and they're to our right. Um, but at the same time, like you tune in any time of any day that's not in prime time with their opinion pieces, and they're still airing a bunch of very entertaining, by design, by Roger Ailes, who's like, show some leg and show some boobies. Like, actually, been <laughs> the guiding principles of Fox News to be entertaining and to build a Republican base You're under the guise of hard news. You could not be more hypocritical and more garbagey than right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as you pointed out, it's like he's describing their straight news, their straight news, which is propaganda in a variety of different ways. You can follow Media Matters to get that. Like they're they're busy pretending every day that the pandemic hasn't been raging out of control. Uh, turn around straight news, Fox News people, and see that more than 3,000 people a day are dying. I know it's not exciting like Benghazi, but arguably as important in terms of the human cost. Um, and 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 also, like even that straight news, which has never been objective or concerned with the concerns of real people, is under an incredible amount of pressure to be even more biased and is clearly bowing to it as Donald Trump um, is attacking them on Twitter every day and they're getting Fox News sucks chants uh, sent at them. So it's just, it's not only a weird thing for him to do it on Fox, it's a weird thing for him to say that on Fox now, like considering what Fox is trying to prove to its audience that it is. Geraldo. Anyway, he's actually been in the trash recently. <laughs> yeah, and then all, there's a great moment everyone should look up where he's talking to Jesse Waters and he's like, "Listen, my, uh, I haven't really been in contact with the president. He hasn't picked mm-hmm. up the last couple co- times I've called him. Uh, I think he's not happy with me because I ex- accept reality vis-a-vis the election. But uh, it's just <laughs> like, but, uh, just like uh, I'm sorry, man. This is so sad." You made him so Italian in your accent there. He's got kind of that like New York thing going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) 
for my garbage person of the week. Uh, sorry, not sorry. I calls him as I sees him. First time ever garbage person for me. It is going to be one outgoing representative, Tulsi Gabbard, who I will remind you has like three weeks left in government. And this is an incredibly important time for the US government. People are really hurting when it comes to the pandemic. So what is Representative Gabbard using her time for? Demonizing transgender girls with this tweet getting my attention yesterday by Representative Tulsi Gabbard and chooses a bill called Protect Women's Sports Act would clarify Title IX protections to be based on biological sex, which would impact transgender athletes participating in athletic programs for women and girls. So look, you can go and you can get the details. I'm not gonna put a lot of time into it because it's nonsense, it's not gonna happen. But what you do need to know is some of the context around this. So the bill's co-sponsored by an Oklahoma Republican, always a good sign when it's a legislation that would bear on you know, a, a discriminated against group. A similar bill was introduced in the Senate earlier this year by Kelly Loeffler and other Republicans. Look, it's weird. Now here's the thing, to do this bill at all, trash. You belong in trash heap for that, to do it Knowing it's not even gonna pass, worse, to do it as one of your last acts as an elected official, knowing that it's not gonna pass, that is the ultimate garbage. She's gonna be gone in less than a month, but she wants to make sure that everyone knows that she stands with the Republicans on this issue. This issue, which previously when she's been criticized for her past statements about the LGBT community, she assured everyone those were a long time ago, which they were. And she totally stands with the community, which at least at that point she seemed to. But she really wants to make sure you know what she thinks about the transgender community on her way out. Which is not, it's obviously not good for her political future if she runs for office as a Democrat again. But hypothetically, the right is obsessed with attacking the transgender community. And they desperately want people who are going to agree with them on that. So look, maybe that's not what this is. Maybe she just genuinely has an issue with this community. But in the short term, it seems to help her politically, although not necessarily as a Democrat. So absolute garbage, cannot believe that this is how you'd spend your last few weeks. Like people need help, they're dying out there. They're losing their jobs, they're about to be evicted. Let's do this thing. Let's do the attacking the transgender girls thing. Yeah, it's amazing, it's just, I, I too am baffled. By exactly like why, why she would do this? Like, and and who and it's, you know, look around to who supports this kind of thing. This is a huge hit. This like sports sex bill mm -hmm. is a huge hit with like incel Ben Shapiro clones mm -hmm. who couldn't be worse at sports and sex. Like they're obsessed with it. They're, yeah. they're so obsessed with it, like Kelly Loeffler being affiliated with the bill is the only thing that makes sense here because she owns a women's basketball team. And in keeping with Kelly Loeffler, it is only stuff that benefits her specifically in some way. That is the only thing that she has ever been interested in, some weird corrupt thing she can make money off of. So in a weird way, I agree, you know. Go ahead, Kelly. This makes sense. There's tons of worse ways you're worse. Um, but in this situation, like people, this is this is one of those things that is only really super important to sectors of like media viewers who mm -hmm. don't care about women's sports. Who yeah. don't? There's no way. Who only are, yeah are just obsessed with attacking the transgender community. And, that's it, and, that's it. And this is, if, if identity politics is anything, it is constantly demonizing a group like to get popular with people who are not part of that group. That's all it is. I just, when I saw this, I was like, sure, why not? Yeah, do that, do that as your last thing, that makes sense. It's so anyway, weird. I don't want Yeah, I don't get it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, which is I guess better and worse at the same time. It but also gets into this weird thing where like I guess this is this is this is slightly different from what it normally seems might happen when they're you know with the bathroom stuff where it's like Ben Shapiro and Tulsi Gabbard now and various other weirdos are like, "Hey, I guess I'm just going to have to see your genitals now." You're gonna have to show me. 
just because uh, I'm. It's like a weird version. It's literally he's trying to be the FBI guys that where the FBI stands for female body inspector. Exactly, like, you, you trashy bastard. You're pretending. Well, it's, you're pretending that you. Va- oh God, I'm really. It's it's all fake. It's, it's all, all fake. fake. It's all fake, and it's, it's potentially useful if you want to have an audience with the right wing. Anyway, and, and, and none of them uh, want that. None. Of, but just the last thing is, none of them want to have like an earnest discussion about like what might be considered something remotely close to a a realistic argument about who gets to participate in what sporting events. Like none of them, it's never, it's not about Title IX sports and participation. It's only about identity politics and wedge issues and building an audience of of schmucks, so to speak. Now that said, uh, those are our garbage people of the week, but what about the TDR community. Well, uh, 17,000 of you voted on the community tab uh, yesterday on uh, the TDR YouTube channel. And coming in this week at fifth with 3% of the vote, Mike Pompeo for going ahead with a 900 strong Christmas party during a terrible time in the pandemic. In fourth at 10% of the vote, Giuliani for infecting others on his voter fraud tour, specifically by crop dusting them. <laughs> uh, in third place, uh, David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler got 12% of the vote for seemingly getting worse every single week. Every week we learn more about the corruption, it's absolutely insane. Uh, runner up this week at 24% is the Arizona GOP for asking their followers to die for Trump. Like, are you brave enough to take a broadhead arrow to the forehead? But number one at 51%, Ron DeSantis for going after COVID whistleblower Rebecca Jones. I really would not have expected that. That is actually amazing, but it's not even close. Ron DeSantis is the TDR community garbage person of the week. Congratulations, Ron DeSantis. To be in Florida, and like if you're a Cuban American immigrant, family descendant or whatever, for 58 on, for for you, this is a Castro style government trying to suppress free distribution of information. Mm-hmm. That blows my mind. This should lose voters for DeSantis. He is sending his Castro type thugs in, in an authoritarian manner, so he can be like, no, it's totally fine. He's trying to cover up how many people are being killed in his authoritarian regime. Yeah. What? Ugh. What? Can't. Terrible. And after, and after we already got the information. <laughs> So stupid. And like I said on the show yesterday, really fast because we got to move on. Like I said on the show yesterday, none of DeSantis's followers believe any of the information anyway. Yeah. Like even once it gets out, they don't believe it. So what are you so worried about? But anyway, those are your garbage people of the week. Thank you to the 17,000 of you who voted. And thank you, Brett, for taking time out to come on our show. I know you, you host 17 different shows on Fridays, but thank you for joining us. Yeah, one's already shot, the other one's. Just very mellow. Thank you, John. And you'll be on the main everyone, show. Your TYT I will link. be. And if uh, everyone watching this, if you haven't already followed uh, TYT on Twitch at twitch.tv slash TYT, that is where Common Room will be airing later on today. So you're definitely gonna go there. It's free to follow, free to watch. Go take a look, you might enjoy it. And you'll be there with Anne Foley and Ching3871, who recently subscribed. Super duper awesome. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you, Brett. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.